Hey folks, what's going on? Today we're going to be looking at how to quickly set up Touch Designer along with Bitwig. Uh, Bitwig is a great piece of software, a lot of similarities to Ableton, but a lot of different design choices about how they have modular synths built in, the different kinds of effects they have built in, and it's just a little bit of a twist on a live performance environment that also works really well for recording. One of the big things is also it is pretty compatible with Windows, Mac, and Linux, so if that's kind of your jam, definitely worth looking into. And it's actually really easy to get set up with Touch Designer and Bitwig together through TD Bitwig, which is a library that we're gonna use today to basically get these two to be tightly in sync and have lots of control over them. If you've ever worked with TD Ableton, a lot of the concepts are gonna be very familiar, which is great. And if you haven't, don't worry, we're gonna dive into it now. So what I'm gonna do here is just stop my session I just have a, a demo session loaded up here that ships with Bitwig and I'm going to delete everything inside my touch designer project so that we just have a blank project here. And the first thing you're going to want to do is set up touch designer as a control surface inside of Bitwig. And the way this works is Bitwig itself has a control surface API in the back end that a lot of MIDI controllers and a lot of other kinds of musical controllers, whether they're MIDI or whatever they're using, can actually take control of a lot of the deeper elements of Bitwig. And Touch Designer uses that same kind of API to actually control everything inside of Bitwig. So to set up Touch Designer as a control surface, we're gonna first hover up to the little dashboard button at the top of Bitwig here. And what we're gonna do is go to controllers and you can see I've already added Touch Designer here, but I'm gonna delete it and add it again so you can see exactly step-by-step step how to do it. So the first time you come here, this controller section is gonna be blank, so we're gonna click on Add Controller. And then what we're gonna do is inside of the hardware vendor, we're gonna look for Derivative. And this comes built in inside of Bitwig. I didn't add any other derivative packages. Uh, the two companies have a great relationship and the derivative kind of control for touch designer is already built right into Bitwig. So I'm gonna select derivative and there's gonna be two different products here called touch designer. One of them is by Mark, who's a great community member and the other one is by derivative and you can see that version number is newer. So we're gonna go ahead and use that. And all we have to do is go ahead and hit add. Now, a lot of these settings you probably don't need to play with. Uh, for most folks, I find they're working kind of Bitwig and their visuals on the same computer. So in this case, the Touch Designer IP address would still be perfectly valid as 127.0.0.1, which when we're talking about networking speak, basically means look inside of this computer, not some other computer on the network. And then we're gonna have a Bitwig import, which is set to default to 8088 as well as a touch designer port, which is 9099. Now, in most cases, these are not gonna be used by any other piece of software, so you could probably just leave these as is, and that's what we're gonna do today. But if you are running a more complicated network or you need to talk between two computers, this is where you're gonna come set the IP address of the touch designer computer, as well as update those ports if you have specific port requirements. So that's it. We now have the Bitwig side of the equation set up. So we can go ahead and close the settings here. And what we can do is come back into Touch Designer. And in Touch Designer, first we're gonna navigate inside of our palette. So if you don't have the palette browser open, you can always use the shortcut Alt plus L, and that'll open up the floating palette browser for you. And inside of the main derivative folder here, we'll find an area called TD Bitwig, and we're gonna click on that, and that's gonna show us a bunch of different Bitwig devices. Now, the way this is set up, like I said, it's very similar to TD Ableton, is that instead of having one main gigantic component, we actually have a bunch of smaller components that address, do, or communicate with specific things inside of Bitwig. And depending on what we wanna do with that project, how we wanna control it, what kind of data we want going back and forth, we can really set up a system that's very specific to our needs just by dragging in the few elements that we want. Now, before we get into the few elements that we want, there's one element that we need, which is this Bitwig main component. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and click and drag that in to my project. And what you'll see is that connected channel went from zero to one. That means we have a good connection between these two softwares, easy as that. Now, if we wanted to test this, I could open up my text port using Alt and T. And what I can do is clear the text port and even go to the parameters of this Bitwig main, go to troubleshoot, and I can say send ping. And you can see what's gonna print out is a ping is sent and a ping reply is received. That means my Bitwig main component went over to Bitwig itself, said, hey, how are you doing? Are you live? Bitwig said, yeah, I'm good. And we got the ping reply received. So that's great. So even with just those few settings, we're already got our initial connections set up. Now, as an example, there are a lot of different things you can do with this TD Bitwig. What I usually really like is having a Bitwig song component inside of my project. Same with TD Ableton, because what this is gonna do, if I drag and drop this into my project, is give me all kinds of information about the tempo, whether there's looping going on, the time signature, where the transport is, whether it's playing or not playing or recording. And the really great thing is, you can see inside of the Bitwig song parameters here, we've got a lot of options. We can play, start, change the tempo, nudge the tempo, change the time signature, turn looping on and off, and even change the scenes. So if we were gonna give this a quick test to see if it works, what I can do is hit stop. It's gonna stop my Bitwig and reset the transport. And then I can go ahead and hit play. And you can see immediately Bitwig started playing. I could let this go for just a second, but I know that, hey, you know, maybe in about four bars, I wanna go to the next scene. So I could switch this to takeoff here, which is the name of that scene here. And I could say, okay, this is bar seven and then bar eight, and then I can launch scene, and then it's gonna smoothly transition into that scene with the great quantizing that a lot of these softwares have now. I could do the same thing if I wanna go straight to the outro, select the outro scene, wait till this gets to the end of bar 16 here, and then hit launch and then go right to the outro. And then again, I can stop this, start it, do whatever you want. So I always think the Bitwig song is a really important one to have inside of your project. Now let's say you wanna do something else. Let's say for example, I have this E kick here, which is my kick drum, and I've got two different kind of effects on it. I've got the E kick, which is generating that kick drum tone, and I have an EQ2 here. And let's say I wanted to for example, control some of the tuning or the decay or any of the, even the output volume of this specific device. For that, what I can do is go to the Bitwig Remotes device. Now this component is really great because what it allows you to do is target a very specific device, plugin, effect, or whatever that you have inside of Bitwig. So I can go ahead and click and drag that into my project here. Let me move this palette out of the way for now. And you can see here, by default, it's just gonna pick whatever the first thing is inside of the project. And the way we navigate through the tracks and devices is by using these previous track and next track buttons. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit previous track here. So I get to the track called E-Kick. And then what I can do is come down here and I can see which device it's selecting. Right now it's selecting the E-Kick device, but I could just as quickly hit next device and now I can see I have my EQ2 selected. And the great thing is, depending on which of the devices I select, all of the sliders and parameters at the bottom of the parameter window here are gonna update to match. So right now you can see it's low and high frequency controls for this two band EQ. But I could go back to my previous device and now on the E kick, you can see I got decay, amount, tune, and all those things are represented inside of the parameters here. Now, great thing is I could go ahead and start this again, even just using the Bitwig song here. And then what I can do is start playing with things like, oh, what is the different elements of the tuning gonna do to this kick drum? And you can see as I'm changing this parameter on the right here, 
that value is updating in real time on the left. I can say, okay, how about the amount? How about the tone? How about the decay? And you can really go to town playing with all of the different parameters here, even whether they're gonna be controlled in real time or connected to things like LFOs or sensors like connect cameras. Sky is the limit with what you can do, and it's really easy to do that with Touch Designer. Now, one helpful tip that I would recommend is on the Bitwig remotes devices, you can see that the channel names here aren't automatically named. But a great thing you can do is in the parameters, go to TD Bitwig, and you can say name channel prefix. Now, when you turn that on, you're gonna see it's gonna update all of the channels inside of this component so that their names match a little bit better to what you're actually trying to control or trying to even read from. So for example, we could have a music performer or a DJ kind of playing, and maybe we don't even want to control Bitwig, but we just want to see what they're controlling. So you can see as I move this decay knob in Bitwig, I can watch that OSC decay value inside a touch designer and maybe make some generative content based on that. Now, another great element inside of the TD Bitwig is the Bitwig track element here. Now this is great because I find when you're working with performers who are using Ableton or Bitwig, a lot of the time there's going to be stems broken out, so full songs, and in a very same way that we see here. Full songs are broken out into all different kinds of elements, whether it's the drums, the melodic parts, the harmonies, uh, the different instruments, the basses. And when performers are playing, a lot of the time they're even just doing arrangements live using volume controls and track controls. And this is where the Bitwig track is really great because what I can do is go through similarly the tracks like we saw before. And I can say, you know what? I want to control the bass and now I have easy volume pan controls for that element. I can also control the sends. So if I have some reverbs or delays in the sends for the live performance, I can see and control those in real time. So this is just a great thing to have, especially for sets where you don't have a ton of tracks. Maybe you've got eight tracks or 16 tracks. It's nice to just have one Bitwig track for each one so you can see what's going on with that track. Now, the last one that I think is super useful for most folks is going to be the Bitwig clip. And what this is gonna allow us to do is basically control and trigger the individual clips in the clip grid. Now, this can be great, especially whether you're using Bitwig from a performance standpoint or if you're creating an immersive installation and maybe you just have some you know, sound effects that are gonna be triggered by sensors or some ambient music that you wanna have transition into not ambient music based on user activity, this Bitwig clip allows you to basically just hit play, stop, and I mean, <laughs> not much else you're gonna do with clips other than hit play and start, but this lets you do that. So for example, if we want to go to, now we're already on the gnarly quirks, which is great because the clips are named differently here, which is a great example. But let's say we weren't on that one. Again, we can use our previous and next track buttons, get to gnarly quirks. And then what we can do is in the same way, we have a clip navigation section here. And this is where you can see right now we have the clip GQ2 selected, which is this first clip. What I can do is hit next clip. Now it says GQ4. And the really great thing about this integration is that you can actually see a lot of the UI feedback inside of Bitwig. So if you watch this GQ4, as we move to GQ5, that's actually gonna get highlighted to show us that we've actually selected that clip. Now you can see we're on this last clip here. And if I wanna launch this clip in time with the music, all I have to do is go ahead and hit launch. And then with the nice quantization, that's gonna put that in the right spot for me. So there's a lot of things you can do with TD Bitwig. I hope this gets you a quick start into working with these two pieces of software together. The last thing I'll recommend is the two pieces of documentation that are very, very useful. If I bring up my browser here, the first is when you go to docs.derivative.ca, you go to the wiki. If you look for the page called TD Bitwig, this is a great page because what it does is actually gives you a great overview of each one of the different components that you have inside of your kind of like Bitwig hierarchy of devices. We looked at a few of them. And the nice thing is each one of them has its own documentation page that tells you a bit more about it. Or you can go to this TD Bitwig user guide page 
which gives you a little bit more information about how the back end works, uh, if you have any kind of troubleshooting issues, how you can deal with those, how the cursor works in like more minutia. So there's a lot of great things that you can also check out inside of this page. So with that said, I hope you get up and running with Bitwig and Touch Designer quickly and easily using TD Bitwig. Enjoy and we'll see you in the next one. Hey folks, thanks for watching. If you like our YouTube content, I highly recommend you check out the Interactive and Immersive HQ Pro. The HQ Pro is the only comprehensive educational resource and community for immersive design, touch designer, and creative tech pros. In the HQ Pro trainings, we cover almost any topic you can think of, and we go way more in depth than we do in our YouTube tutorials. We have a private group where Matthew Reagan, myself, and our other industry veteran and pioneer teachers answer your questions every single day. If that sounds cool, click the link in the description to learn more. And if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe for more free touch designer and immersive content.